Today we're going to take a deeper look into different types of sketches with our main focus being on an isometric sketch. Now, as shown in the figure to the right, an isometric sketch is drawn at a 30 degree angle from the horizontal baseline. This shows the three sides simultaneously. Isometric graph paper and a ruler will help you draw straight lines at this angle. We also have online software that will also allow us to sketch in an isometric view. An isometric view is used to realistically represent an object and communicate details that are difficult to describe in words. When an isometric view is drawn by hand, we call it an isometric sketch. In an isometric sketch, the object appears three-dimensional. Three sides of the object are shown, and the size and location of the features on the object are proportional to the real thing. In an isometric view of the cube that you see in figure one off to the left, three sides are visible. The dimensions in an isometric view are labeled with width, depth, and height. The width and depth lines are drawn at a 30 degree angle from the horizontal as shown. If you measure the width, depth, and height of an object in an isometric view, the measurements are in proportion of the real object. When making an isometric sketch, you'll want to orient the view so that as much of the information is shown on the three visible sides as possible. In this course, we will always orient the object in an isometric sketch so that the front of the object is turned towards the lower left corner of the drawing, as is shown in Figure 1. All isometric sketches have specific characteristics that we should follow. One, the sketch should appear three-dimensional because three sides are shown. Two, all principal dimensions, which are width, depth, and height, are represented in the true proportion. Three, Width and depth lines are drawn at 30 degrees from the horizontal lines. Four, all height lines are vertical. And five, the shape of the object's faces are distorted, not represented as true shapes. When developing realistic sketches requires a sense of proportion. You must accurately represent the size, angles, and other spatial relationships for the real object. Using isometric graph paper can make sketching isometric views easier. The width and depth grid lines are oriented at the correct 30 degree angle and the grid spacing helps you to correctly represent lengths along the three primary axes so that the proportions are accurate. Your task for this lesson is to create an isometric sketch of one of the following objects below. You can use the isometric graph paper or you can use GeoGebra to create your object. If you are unfamiliar on how to use GeoGebra with the isometric grid paper, please continue with the video and watch the following demonstration. For this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how we can use our GeoGebra Classic in order to create isometric sketches. Now, by default, when you open up your GeoGebra, you're going to see the Cartesian paper on your platform. What we're going to need to do is go ahead and remove that option and replace that with the isometric paper. The way that we can go ahead and do this is we're going to go up to that right hand side where we find the blue circle and triangle and we're going to go ahead and get rid of our axis. So the X and Y axis are now removed. And then from there, we're going to go to our second option, which is our hide the grid. From here, once we select hide grid, we're going to go to that fourth option, which is your isometric paper. Now, from here, what we're going to need to do is zoom in a little bit. We want to get those triangles as large as we can. Once they go back to the smaller, we're going to back it up just a hair so that we can see those larger lines. Now, in order to make your isometric sketch, what we're going to look at doing is using the line tool. So we're going to go up to that third option up at the top, and we're going to go ahead and select segment. When we select that segment, that's going to give us a beginning and an end point that we can use. Now, in order to create your shape, what we're going to need to do is find one of the triangles. And from here, we're going to go ahead and use each triangle would be one linking cube or 0.75 inches. So we're going to go ahead and create the front of our shape. So we're going to click on the one part of the triangle. I'm going to go straight down to make that vertical edge and click again. Here you'll see that we have a nice sharp edge. From there, we're going to go over. I'm going to go over three and I'm going to make that same line parallel. So I'm going to go back and click on point A. And I'm going to make sure that I go right back above point C. From here, I'm going to go ahead and make another edge. Now with this, then I'm working on the front edge of this. If I want to go back and make a little bit of a cutout, I'm going to go ahead and go up to the right. And here I'm going to go ahead and make just a little square so that it looks like it's the end of the shape. 
However, if I come off of the end of that shape and go down to the right, now we're gonna see that we have this little cutout. And again, I'm gonna make that right edge. And now we pretty much have the front of our shape. Now we can go and add a second level to this as well. But in order to do that, we need to give this a little bit of depth. So I'm gonna go off to that right edge and add a little depth to this by adding one cube. And from there, we're gonna go ahead and go back all the way past E so that we're almost vertical with that point E that we created. From here, what I can go ahead and do is now create a second level. So it's gonna kind of look like I'm just creating a single level shape. But what I want to do is go off of this point and I'm gonna go up and again, I'm gonna add the right side of my shape as well as the left side or the front of my face. From here, I can go ahead and add the top and now what we have is a shape created using our GeoGebra Classic. Now, if you want to get rid of all of the points and all of those blue dots, there's a couple ways that we can do this. The first thing we need to do is go up to that arrow tool and select move. From our algebra window, we're going to go all the way up to the top here, and we're going to go ahead and select our little icon. And from here, what we're going to need to select is object type. So when we select the object type, it's just going to go ahead and order this for us and make it a little bit easier. Once I click on points, I can go ahead and change the point color to black. And I could also change that point color and take that down from five to one. The next thing I'm going to want to do is go and find those segments and click on that segment. And just as I did before, I'm going to go ahead and click on those A's and we're going to go ahead and hide those names. Now from there, you're going to notice that we still have a few letters remaining. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is look for that point again. Let's go back and remove the letters from the point, and there you go. Now, if you wanna get rid of the paper, we can just simply go back and select that move tool. We can go back to our paper and make that blank paper, and now you have a three-dimensional isometric sketch using your GeoGebra Classic.